Andy Flexen here for seconds out with heavyweight contender Dillian White. Dillian Oscar Rivas next week, Saturday, big fight. On paper, do you think he's the toughest challenge you've had since Joshua, perhaps? I don't know, man. I fought a lot of good fighters, man. I, I don't know, you know. That's all the stats and the bookies and for the, the fans and the general public and the media to, to decide, you know. I think everyone I fought's been tough, man. I've had some tough fights, <laughs> you know, real tough. Do you think Oscar Rivas brings anything different from previous challenges in terms of his style? He's probably... He, he, he's young, he's undefeated, very, very, probably the most experienced amateur I fought, probably, apart from Parker, probably. You know, um, but actually he's beaten a lot of top people more than Parker, so yeah, probably. He brings a lot of, you know, he's undefeated, he's relentless and all this kind of stuff, but it's boxing, man. A good champion find a way to beat all comers. Does it ever bother you that you're taking on arguably tougher challenges than some of the world champions out there? I just get on with it, man. Literally, I just keep my head down and get on with it, man, you know. The fans are supporting me and they put a lot of time and effort into me, so I just try and give them good fights, good undercards, not just my fights, good fights to good undercard fights as well, you know. So the fans can enjoy and feel like they got their money worth when they leave. You've got people like Tyson Fury, you've had some beef with, I guess they call it, recently. He's fighting, they reckon, Trevor Bryan in the autumn. I looked at Trevor Bryan's record. What I was gonna that's, that's a disgrace. We fight Trevor Brown. That's a disgrace. It's a disgrace to ESPN. Disgrace to Top Rank. Disgrace. If they make Fury versus Trevor Brown, that's a disgrace. You know, Bob Arum lets open his mouth and talk shit. You know, that's a disgrace. If he put that on, that's a disgrace. It's a disgrace that he put Tom Shorts on. You know, they could even sell the place out. And Vegas has got millions of people with loads of money in their pocket looking for something to do at the weekend. You say it's a disgrace. Would it be a disgrace if Fury was still on the comeback trail or is it more because he's saying he's the lineal heavyweight champion, he's getting ready to fight Wilder? So. It'd be a disgrace anyway. Look at the level of, <laughs> look at the level of people <laughs> the level of people he's fought and, and stuff, you know. Or do you go from Klitschko, Deontay Wilder to Tom Shorts? Okay, the first two is acceptable. Safari, I didn't even think Safari was never acceptable to be in this, but I was trying to, um, Pianetto was acceptable, you know. What can he go from Wilder? It's a disgrace, man. And the fact that it was rumoured that it might be Miller, it might be Pulev, he obviously talked about fighting you and then changed his mind. Miller and Pulev would have been good options. Well, he should fight Pulev. But that's, Pulev is, is past it now. You know, we see you in there, Pulev. He should fight Pulev. He should jump with the opportunity to fight Pulev. He talked about you briefly and then changed his mind, even though the diamond belt was put on the line. But does that, does that make it more annoying for you when he fights someone like Trevor Bryan, the fact that it could have been you and he's decided he doesn't fancy it? He don't care about the fans. You know, he don't care about the fans. The fans don't want to see him fight Trevor Bryan. Who the hell is Trevor Bryan? You know? Because of jokers, man. Do you never fancy an easier night yourself? Do you never look at the peop like other people fighting and think, do you know what, I'm going to have a gimme? Easy nights are good, but they're dangerous as well because... When you've got a dangerous fight, you're switched and you're locked in, you're, you're edgy, you're alert, you're weary, you know what I mean? You're, you're on it. When it's just like someone you're thinking, I don't need to train to beat this guy. It's dangerous as well, you know? And I never had a lot of amateur fights. I had seven. So for me, fighting these guys who's had hundreds plus amateur fights, it's good for me, you know what I mean? I'm piggy banking and they experience by beating them. You've said before that you're always playing catch-up because of your limited amateur experience. What sort of pro experience do you need to get to before you'd be ready to say, do you know what, I'm there now, this is me, at my prime, on an even playing field? I don't know, man. When it comes together, it comes together. I have no idea. Mark Tibbs, earlier, we were talking to him, we were saying it seems like you could be employing more counter-punching tactics in this fight because Rivas is known for coming forward, cutting the ring off. Is that something you've been working on, particularly in the gym? I've been working on everything, man, you know, because a lot of guys, when they fight me, they fight different from them fighting all because we've seen it time and time again. Elenius, an aggressive come-forward fight. He fought me, he was on the back foot the whole time. Brown, aggressive come forward, he fought me. He was moving around and doing all of this stuff, you know, Parker. A very elusive fight, he fought me, he came forward, you know, <laughs> so I just don't work on everything, man, you know. I've had good sparring, hard sparring in, so I've just been just, just working and stuff, man, you know. A lot's been said about the situation with the WBC, they're messing you about, this fight could be for the interim title, we still don't know at this stage. Last time we spoke to Suleiman, he was saying he thinks it's become a media circus and that's not helping the situation. What, what do you make of that? He says a lot in the media, 
to be honest. He, he's the one that says a lot in the media. Not me. I said a few facts in the, in, in the media because it's frustrating. I've done everything they asked of me. I've done time and time again, risked my number one position. I've paid them a lot of money. I've defended their title. I've won many title belts at WBC. Why had one WBC title fight before he fought for the Royal title? You know, he'd been champion for four or five years. He fought two mandatories and they was both garbage. You know, he fought Stavrone, who won the title off. Stavrone had one or two fights in two years, waiting, sitting and waiting. Then he fought this other Brazil, who was number three, shouldn't have been mandatory. But, you know, there you go, so. You had the issue with the WBO as well, where it seemed like you were going to be number one, and then Usyk came out of nowhere, or came from cruiserweight rather, and leapfrogged. What do you make of that rule generally, never mind your situation, but the rule itself that a former champion at another weight can instantly become mandatory? <laughs> I don't know, it's hard for me to say because I've never been at another weight before. Maybe if it was at a cruiserweight or whatever, I'd probably say, yeah, it's a great rule. But if I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know, but at least they've been consistent with it for years. So at least they've been consistent, but there's no way Fury in that should be above me after fighting that idiot he just fought, you know. And finally, after everything that's happened, WBC, WBO, all this time you've waited, still not had a world title shot. How much does it actually mean to you to be a world champion compared to just fighting the best people, giving the fans the best fights? It means a lot, man. I mean, again, to, to become world champion, it means a lot. I want to become world champion. And that's why I keep pushing and keep trying and keep grafting and keep working, man. You know? Dillian White, we wish you the best of luck. It's Rivas. Thanks for your time.